The San Francisco Public Library presents the 7th Annual Bayview Anna E. Wadden Branch Library Poetry Recital. And here's your host, Larry Ware. Good evening, everyone, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our 7th Annual uh, Bayview Wadden National Poetry Recital. It is indeed a pleasure to uh, uh, be hosting the program again, and uh, we'd like to give a very special thanks to uh, Linda Brooks Burton, our branch manager. She's doing a wonderful job here. Let's give her a great round of applause. Uh, come on up, Linda. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got to get you on the camera. Yeah. Uh, Linda, say a few words. Well, right? thanks for coming out. This is our uh, second evening in poetry. Last week we had a really special treat with some uh, young artists that came out, and we were very delighted to have them back and I, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this evening as well. So welcome and uh, let's keep this poetry going. I hope to have more poetry uh, in December. I'm going to have a Kwanzaa program and I hope that some of you guys will come out for that December 18th and we'll do open mic poetry once again. So enjoy. Okay and we'd also like to thank uh, Dave Swabi, our cameraman. Uh, Dave has been doing a great job covering this event every year uh, since 1990. He's, he does a, I mean, his staff does a beautiful job. So we're gonna uh, get underway with our seventh annual uh, Baby White Poetry Recital. My first poet up, uh, it's indeed a pleasure always working with uh, this gentleman here. He's one of the top poets in the country. He's been very modest, but, uh, uh, Rudolph Valentino Breland, uh, Rudy, uh, he's one of the top poets in the country, and uh, we're going to call Rudy, he's a featured poet again this year, so let's give uh, Rudy a great round of applause. Uh, so I'm going to start off with two poems. So I'm going to start off uh, with two poems. Uh, first poem is a poem that was inspired by uh, the procedure of expressing poems in a verbal way. Uh, Portrait from the People was a class I took at City College, and I wrote this poem that came out of the inspiration of uh, poem for the people, not just saying words, just to, just to say words. Poetry for the people. Hunger lies within their eyes. Deep inside their body cries. Their need for food, for some words of nourishment to help give the meaning of thought and encouragement. It's healthy and it's legal. Food you can understand and digest. And the soul enjoy it the best. Energy that harmonizes the heart. A few votes of spark to awaken the mind. It's long overdue and about time. Poetry for the people. From within all of us it flows. Within some it will flow and others it will flow and be unknown. The ears awake to hear the words of faith. To hear the words of the truth is to be let the mind lose because people are the poetry. Poetry for the people. Poetry you can drink, poetry you can eat. Words you can digest and taste and feel the sweetness of poetry because you are the poetry for poetry for the people. Next poem is uh, Beta Breakers. I've been a regular participant of the Beta Breakers. And by running it, it inspires me, being out there with all the people, sweat, smiling, and struggling. Um, beta Breakers. They are 71, 500,000, wide and strong, wide, and awake, ready to go. Will I survive through this? I guess so. I've been here before. It's the Beta Breakers. Early morning, cool breeze, a start of a wonderful day. It's Sunday morning. It doesn't start until 8. The parade of feet and toes to greet the street. A foot race of 7.6 miles of the San Francisco Beta Breakers. The gun is sounded. The street overflows. The human wall opens up and re releases the flow. Off on a journey through the streets of San Francisco to the Pacific Ocean. Men, women, and children. People line the streets to watch while helicopters gaze overhead. Centipedes winding through the waves of people up Hayes Street for a thrill, pouring into the panhandle to scatter into Golden Gate Park. 
Chariots of Fun, Halloween in May. Examiner Beta Breaker, Runner, 71,000 plus strong and long. I'm just another pair of legs in the crowd. The San Francisco Beta Breaker, the huge costume party en route to the beach. A, 12, a 12K race of sweat and smiles. The goal is to finish. It doesn't matter what the time or many. It is a time to breathe and communicate and relate within the time and the space of the San Francisco Beta Breakers. See how fast they go, see how well they flow. Thank you, Rudy. Our next poet is going to be uh, Phyllis C. Uh, she's going to do some poetry. She's another one of the top poets in the Bay Area. So let's give her a great round of applause. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to diversify a little bit, and I'm going to do uh, a song, but in poem form. The name of this song is God Sent Angels, and this is a children's song. God send angels here today. God, we need them so, I say. We see the mass confusion that our sinful nature yields. We implore thee for a change, keeping eyes toward the hills. Angels in the land, please extend your graceful hands all around and throughout God's creation here and now. God, it's such a comfort knowing that you're always in our lives, even when we're not our best. We thank thee for the wealth of days you give for our salvation, so we say. Send angels here today. God, there's magic men claim to have, but it doesn't hold a candle to the mercies we all share. God, send angels here today. Angels in the land, please extend your graceful hands all around and throughout God's creation here and now. I'll do Ebony Rose. If a rose in its fragility has a designated place in the natural order of the earth, need I debate whether I and my ethnic kin appeared here by mistake like the dust within a whirlwind finally settling where it may? Like the rose in all its splendor, there are those who may lay claim to being quite as exquisite, but to a man are maimed by the selfish deeds of those who choose to look the other way and deny to them the basic rights they sample day by day. In my appointed lifetime, I struggle to define what blackness really means to me comes now the rose to mind. It asks no man to rent a space in soil its home below, and neither does it ask of him the time to cease its growth. So Ebony Rose, keep pushing up, and through it all, be strong. The last will soon replace the first, at which time we'll be home. Some great poetry from uh, Phyllis C. I see great things from her in the near future. Um, our next uh, poet is going to be uh, Nakisha Brown. Uh, she's, this is her first time uh, participating in our uh, poetry program, and uh, this young lady is uh, very gifted. So let's give uh, Nakisha Brown a great round of applause, and we see a lot of great things coming from her. Hello. 
Okay, first I'm gonna do a poem I wrote myself called I Will Stand Tall. Stepping forward as I sway in my old so central way, coming upon the break in which I shall move forward. Strangely, the door is locked. So I, being the woman that I am, I enter, not knowing what's ahead, I stand tall, with my hands on my hips, a stern look on my face, with the utmost determination to discover what lies ahead. You see, curiosity may have killed the cat, but only the inquiring minds receive mental satisfaction. You should never underestimate the capabilities of the unknown, and neither do I. For I'm aware it's gonna be difficult. I know everything's not gonna be just laid out, only for the taking, only for my benefit, but I enter. To understand where I stand, you need to understand me. I've had hardships, I've had battles. I've wiggled in and out of one situation to another. So please, don't lift up your hammer and attempt to break me down. Instead, lift me up, view the knowledge in my head, and multiple the strength in my arms, the big size in my feet, and with all the negativities I stumble upon, I enter. I may have a rock hard head or be set in my ways, but please don't think of me as a stubborn old gal. Don't think of me as brittle and broken down. Don't feel sorry for me. I'm not sorry because I'm a woman, because I'm black, because I'm beautiful. In actuality, I am all woman, don't you forget it. I am black, don't discriminate. I am beautiful, don't look too hard. For when I open my doors of freedom, I will stand tall. Okay, and this next one I'm gonna do is a speech by Sojourner Truth. It's called, Ain't I a Woman? Well, there are children, where there is so much racket, there must be something out of kilter. I think that twixt the Negroes of the South and that women of the North, all talking about rights. The white men are being affixed pretty soon, but what's this here talking about? That man over there says women need to be helped in the carriages and lifted over ditches and to have the best of everything. No one ever lifts me into carriages or over mud puddles or gives me the best of anything. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. I have planted and plowed and gathered into barns and no man could hear me. And ain't I a woman? I've borne 13 children and seen most sold to slavery. And when I cried with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I a woman? Then they say, it's that thing in the head. What's this they call it? Intellect. But what's that got to do with Negro's rights or women's rights? If my cup won't hold but a pint and yours holds a quart, wouldn't you be mean not to let me have my half measure full? Then that man in the black there says that women can't have as many rights as men because Christ wasn't a woman. Well, where did your Christ come from? From God and a woman. Man had nothing to do with him. If the first woman was strong enough to turn the world upside down, then these women together should turn it back and get it right side up again. And now that they asking to do it, you men better let them. And if they do do it, won't they still be women? Obliged to you for hearing me, and Sojourner ain't got nothing more to say, but I'll leave you today as a woman. That was great, Lakeisha. Outstanding. Our next uh, poet is going to be a Ron Jakam. Uh, this brother's uh, gifted. I see a lot of great things from this brother here. This, uh, um, this brother's gonna bring the house down. Uh, so let's give uh, Ron Jakam a great round of applause. Thank y'all for coming out. It's love to be in the house with my family at Bayview Hunters Point District. Tonight I'm gonna do a few poems, man, and um, a couple of them just come straight from my heart. One of them y'all heard last week. This one I'm gonna do right now. It's called Brainwashed. And I wrote this one. I just looked out one day and I seen my folks and I knew the reason why. And it goes like this. The jungle's muscles tussle while they hustle, chasing sin and the devil's way to win. Many of our kind are deaf, dumb, and blind. Deaf because they refuse to hear that which is loud and clear. Blind because they refuse to see self and kind, and just plain dumb because they satisfy with being pacified. For 400 years, the devil and its peers have used and abused all related to black to increase its wicked stack. Why, I say, do we cling to this savage while it ravages our tribes with Nathan the Hyde? 
When we search, we find our answer deep within the church, and it's through religions that the savage made his incision. When you read the Bible, you notice it's manipulated by your rival. Although it's divine, barbarians have altered it to work for their kind. Within their demonic schools, they produce tools and fools by teaching Satan's rules, your location designed to produce slavation. Through our heads, our race is brutally fed, genocidal bread causing us to be lost, brainwash when our life is the cost, brainwash. <laughs> this is a dedication to the sisters in the audience. And I hope y'all enjoy this. And this one is called Black Cherry. The essence of all beauty and grace makes its home on a black woman's face. Feared by many, but loved by plenty. Blessed with sexy curves seen only by the soldier who deserves the right to serve. Black Cherry, I look in your eyes and I see your ability to control a household and at the same time handle a household. Always outspoken and never could be broken. With no wealth and only knowledge of self, she teaches young soldiers to be bolder. Black Cherry, sweeter than any other berry. A chance to please brings one to his knees. My eyes tear with the lust, only to be, excuse me, <laughs> my eyes tear with the lust only to be stopped by lack of trust. The mere thoughts of your treasures brings dreams of lifelong pleasures. My heart marches to that beat you sung the night we became sprung. It took not penetration to bring sensation, just love at first sight to make the night tight. As I glanced at her black face, my mouth waters for a taste. Sweet black cherry, my choice to marry, my soul may tell I'm buried. To you I shall be true. Like signs of times, your love is purely divine. Oh, sister of mine, mother to all mankind, hang tough and it will, it'll, it'll all be fine. With the conclusion of the scene, I express my dreams and aspirations to see the black family's resurrection. Black Cherry. Thank you, uh, Ron, that was some great poetry. Uh, well, you can see I've got a little person in my arm there. This is uh, last year. Uh, well, she was born uh, June the 20th. This here is my daughter, uh, Precious Unique. Say hi. Say hi, baby. <laughs> this is her first recital. Um, she got me speechless now. Say hi. Look. Say hi. Yeah, uh, well, uh, and that's my wife there, Stella, and my mother uh, is Dorothy Mitchell. Uh, I want to do a, a poem. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to um, uh, dedicate this recital, our seventh annual, to two very special people. Uh, my uncle, uh, Sammy McKeever, who passed away this year, and uh, not only was he my uncle, was like, he was like a big brother to me and my brother and my sisters. And uh, we love him very much and we're going to miss him. And also I'd like to dedicate this to uh, my mother-in-law, Miss Ethel Mae Landry. She passed away as well. Uh, and we're going to miss them both very much. And OK, baby. This uh, first poem, um, it's I, it's this, uh, I feel overjoyed like to be a first time father. And uh, like I was saying, you know how they say a baby's gonna, you're gonna spoil the baby? I think she done spoiled us already. But uh, I would like to, uh, this poem is so special. I, I, this is really what this poem was written about. Uh, it's entitled, Love is Life. Love is life and life is so very, very nice. When the atmosphere is pleasant and thoughts are peaceful, life for living is like a warm and beautiful feeling, touching me, touching you. As I look into the beautiful horizons, I see children playing warm and safe under the loving eyes of the friendly skies, vivacious, energetic, and so full of life, and love is life. As the wonderfulness of the day settles in, a lovely lady places a warm and very sweet kiss on my lips. A heart has been touched and blessed. This beautiful feeling created by me and you was made to be shared. 
always remember the beautiful days of summer. Love is what we make it, and may it always be something beautiful dear near our hearts. Love is me touching you. Love is you touching me. Love is being in touch with each other's feelings. Loving is giving, sharing, and caring. Love makes two hearts sing in harmony. Love makes wedding bells ring. Love brings rain to the flowers and trees and helps them grow beautiful and tall. Love is you and me in a family together living for this love this beautiful life has given us. Love is life. Thank you. <laughs> and you know, also, uh, to, as I said, to be a first-time father and to, to be there with your wife, to experience it for the first time, like, I'll never forget, like, when she was born, like, she crossed her arms around her chest and smiled, and I'll never forget that. Right after she was born, and they asked me, did you want to hold your baby girl? I said, the sugar berry cereal? <laughs> but, uh, okay there, baby. Say thank you. Okay. Another uh, gentleman, a good friend of ours, uh, he's going to come up and do some poetry. Uh, this is his first time as well. So let's give a great round of applause for Charles Hines. Uh, he's going to bring some poetry home to you. Giving thanks to God, I want to say it's a pleasure to be here with everyone tonight, listening to some of you young poets. Kind of touched me back on a memory lane. In the 60s, poetry was a, was a way of life for some of us. The brother spoke about Vietnam over there, and uh, back then, poetry was what we all knew. And to hear some of you young brothers speak kind of brought back a lot of memories for me. Poetry was something I used to do for my mother as a kid, and I would try to sit down and just Whatever came from to my heart and mind, it was just poetry for my mother. But I want to apologize for this being my first time in 79, my mother passed away and poetry kind of got put on the back burner in my life. But it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. And while I was sitting back there, I thought I'd just, just come up with something right off the top of my head. What is poetry? What is poetry? Could poetry be black poetry with rhythms and rhyme? Or is it just a feeling from your heart, or just a feeling from your mind? I think of poetry like the sun that always shines. It's like harmony, it's like balance. It's like a poetic line. Yet I still ask the question, what is poetry? Could it be like the flowers that bloom in the day, in the middle of the hour with a sweet, with a sweet fragrance, so sweet it attracts the bees in many ways? But I still ask the question, what is poetry? And I think I just might know, like the gift of a mother's love given to us, poetry is a gift given from up above. I heard the man up here, Larry, say that poetry is a message. But I just want to let everybody know, the mailman carries the mail, but the poet carries the message, the message of love, the message of truth, the message of faith and the message of the knowledge to tell everyone that we all can live in harmony and we all can live in balance because only a poet can put that in rhythm and only a poet can put that in rhyme. Thank you. Okay, our next uh, featured poet is going to be uh, Jenny Powell. She's published and uh, she's one of the outstanding poets in the country, and she's going to come up and do some wonderful poetry for you. So let's give uh, Jeannie a great round of applause. Thank you. I'm happy to be here tonight, even though I have a slight cold. I'm going to read from February Voices and also from Cadences, my two collections of poetry. This first one is called Flashback. The house leans with a slow creak, waiting. Ladybugs slip through tears in porch screens, their explorations undisturbed. Dust clusters solemnly under a rocking chair, still in its corner. 
worn steps stand free of smudged calling cards generated by paws and fingers and bare feet. Dandelion greens parallel cracked sidewalks, reveling in their longevity. Backyard clotheslines gavotte with summer breezes, burdened only with time. <clears throat> Under the peach tree lie wildflowers, freshly cut, tangled, their fragrance bleeding through fallen leaves. This one is called Journey. The moment my souls touched the tarmac, I did not think of you at all. The old gang enveloped me in sweet-tasting tavern songs and marching chants, evoking times when walls tumbled and dreams lived hard but high up, where all could see and gain the heart they had to have. In honor of my visit, we would mourn Plum Street, conjure Canada outlaws, celebrate Greek town excursions, recall car treks to Nine Mile Drive along rock-salted lanes to view Christmas miracles in the snow. I did not think of you at all. At times, the traffic signal took too long to change, and I would see your face in profile on an iced-over sign, warning of washed-out roads or detours just ahead. Then friends would turn our car into an evergreen drive where warmer faces waited to rekindle select days, as is proper on a journey of the heart. Once under the weeping willow in Louise's backyard, I thought I saw a wedge from a croquet mallet, faded paint blending into winter grass barely exposed. But from the porch came shouts, reassuring in their heartiness that hot mulled wine was waiting, and so there was no time to think of you at all. Thank you. Once again, uh, thank you very much uh, for our seventh annual Bayview Wadden National Poetry Recital. And uh, it's been a pleasure and a wonderful evening. And we look forward to doing it again uh, next year with our eighth annual. And a very special thanks again for uh, Linda Brooks Burton. She's doing such a wonderful job. Let's give her a great round of applause, uh, Linda. And also, uh, the poets that participated, please come up. Uh, we'd like to give you a thank you as well. Again, I would like to thank uh, Charles Hines, Ron Jacquard, Lakeisha Brown, Valentino Brilliant and Tennessee. And, and precious too. 